Hi guys, this is Sarah. This is unusual. For those of you who watch my videos regularly, you'll know that I don't do voiceovers on my videos, but I thought I'd try it today. I usually just put captions on and have music playing in the background. I will have some music playing quietly in the background when I'm speaking, um, but I'm not going to talk that much. I don't really have that much of great interest to say. I'm essentially just going to caption um, or voice over where I would normally caption. So as you can see, I have sketched out on this canvas uh, a lion with a big mane. Um, I just generally Google images, find something that I like and then copy it freehand onto canvas when I do this kind of glue art painting. Um, I've got a since I did this video I've got a new glue gun which has got a much finer point to it which makes life a lot easier but um, at the moment just using this old glue gun this painting probably used about two and a half three glue sticks I think not that much so this was not too bad if you've seen my previous tree of life glue gun painting I think that one took a lot more sticks but then that was four different canvases so I've sped this up obviously I think this is playing 16 times the normal speed because you know you get the idea pretty quickly if you want to try this at home you know it's really easy you don't have to be that accurate um, this is supposed to be an abstract painting. In case you didn't catch what I did then, I've just, I did a, a glue gun blob for the pupils in his eyes and I decided I didn't like them so I just ripped them off. It's quite hard to get the glue off of the canvas. Um, I've had some questions before about whether I uh, worry about the glue coming away, whether I gesso over the top of the glue once I've done it or not. So I, I do usually put gesso over the top, but I have done one or two glue gun paintings where I haven't done that. And the acrylic paint seals it, you know, perfectly well. Um, but if you do have glue on your painting, on your canvas that you don't want, you can usually get it to peel away if you either get your nail under the edge or with a craft knife or something. Uh, but, you know, like I'm doing there, just peeling a bit away with a craft knife. Um, but in terms of you know whether this is going to be safe stuck on your wall or whether the glue is going to come off over time I I've not had any problems uh, with any of my previous ones so I think they're pretty secure and by the time they've got at least one coat of paint over the top and some varnish that it's pretty well secured you'd really have to be trying to get the glue off um, for it to come off and if somebody's deliberately trying to do that well that's their lookout if it falls off as far as I'm concerned This is a 16 inch by 16 inch uh, deep edge canvas. So we're pretty much done with the glue gun now. So that's been left to dry, uh, I think probably just a, a day or two. I mean, the glue out of these glue guns dries within minutes really, but uh, I think this was probably the next day or the day after. And what I've mixed up here to paint the background is um, a mixture of burnt umber, um, ivory black, 
and a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson permanent i think to give me kind of a real deep chocolatey dark chocolate brown um, it looks black as I'm putting it on here, but a little bit later you'll see that it's actually a really rich dark brown. Uh, I also forgot to mention that I have given the whole painting a proper coat of gesso, so I'm not painting over the glue uh, directly here. I'm actually painting over a, uh, a coat of gesso that's been dried for a couple of days. If you've tried painting over glue like this before, you'll know that it's really difficult to get into all the nooks and crannies. Uh, and you'll see a little bit later in the video, or after this uh, clip here where I'm doing this first coat, you'll see how many gaps there are when you hold up to the light when it's dry. Um, but I, I really like this background colour that I'm putting on. It just, yeah, it's just really, really nice, deep, rich brown. It's so difficult to see when you're painting, you know, when your paint's wet, um, it's so difficult to see where the gaps are because where the light shines on the paint, it looks like a gap and it's just actually because the paint's wet. So, you know, often I turn this painting, or these paintings around and around and I look from all angles with the light shining on it and I think I've got all the gaps um, and, you know, whatever else I'm seeing is just where the light shines on the paint and then it dries and there's just so many gaps everywhere. <laughs> it's just so difficult to see. You see the colour a little bit better um, now that it's kind of all over. It definitely is a, a richer chocolate rather than a, a black like it looked when I was painting on the sides. This is me just trying to look at it from all the angles and get all those gaps of white. So this is a couple of days later where it's dried and you, I don't know whether you can see here some of the white bits but I'm going to hold it up to the window now so that you can actually see this is just one coat of the background colour and you'll see just how many gaps there are in this when I hold it up in a sec. There we go. So not only is the paint really thin in some places on his face, but look at the amount of white gaps. <laughs> I was always going to do at least another one coat anyway, but I just thought it was interesting to show you just how many bits are missed when you try and paint over this glue gun, uh, the glue. That's the, the view out of my studio window, in case you're interested, and down to my little courtyard below. Anyway, back to the painting. So, uh, loads of gaps. So, I don't think I've included it in this video, but I gave this painting um, another two coats of paint uh, to try and get all those gaps covered. Oh, I am I'm showing you, uh, I think here, the third coat. This painting took me from start to finish, probably about five or six weeks to complete but that includes uh, the curing varnishing waiting for the glue to dry for a couple of days waiting for the gesso to dry for a couple of days and then three coats of this background And then what I'm starting here is the first wash. So this is um, Windsor and Newton. I probably should have said that earlier. The, the background paint was all Windsor and Newton Galeria acrylic paints. 
This is Windsor & Newton Gold um, mixed with water and that's probably about one part gold to at least 20 parts water. Uh, really was just a tiny little blob of gold mixed in with about half of that uh, little shot cup of water. So I'm brushing it on in sections and then dabbing off with a, a crinkled uh, paper towel. And I was just holding up there briefly the uh, sheet of antique gold leaf that I'm going to be using just to see kind of how the colour match was um, for a bit later on in the video. It really surprised me how well pigmented this paint was actually, you know, how, how metallic it stayed even being so watered down. This is one of my favourite paintings I've done so far. This one in the giraffe, uh, if you haven't seen the giraffe, I'm going to uh, put a uh, little link to it. Um, the, the, the giraffe and this lion are my favourite ones I think I've done today. I've kind of, I've not got bored of acrylic pouring, uh, I still love doing that. The problem I think with acrylic pouring is that there's now 8 million people pouring on YouTube um, and so it's really, it's quite hard to sort of set yourself aside from other people and there's not many people that are doing this at least there's not many at the moment that if you google uh, sorry if you search in youtube for glue gun paintings compared to acrylic pouring i mean there's just a handful really um so i'm really enjoying these type of paintings i'm going to try and do more and actually i'm working on a, a very exciting idea at the moment which i'm not going to tell you about because i don't want anyone to steal my idea um, it's incredibly time consuming, uh, but hopefully there will be a video of something very different up in maybe a month. It's, it's a long project. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying working with this glue gun and, and doing the, uh, embossed leaf over the top on this one. Oh, I just, I just loved the way it turned out. At this stage when I'm recording this voiceover, I'm not sure what, um, what thumbnail I'm going to use. I'm tempted not to use the full finished hung on the wall picture which is typically what I do with most of my paintings these days. Um, I might change that up a little bit and start doing slightly different thumbnails. So at this point when you're watching this you may or may not know what the finished painting looks like because I haven't decided on the thumbnail yet. I am really interested in what you guys think of this voiceover. Uh, is this something, you know, certainly my regular viewers, however many of those I might still have, um, what you think of this? Do you, would you prefer just to have music? Do you like this voiceover? Let me know in the comments below. I know a lot of other pourers or artists on YouTube record the uh, audio, record their sort of voiceover while they're actually doing the painting. I really, really can't do that. Um, I get so lost. I, I've actually tried to do it, but I get so lost in what I'm doing, so engrossed, and I concentrate so much that I just find myself not talking, um, or you know, or talking to myself in a way that I wouldn't necessarily want anybody else to hear on YouTube. So this is this is the only option really. It's it's just music on the background or me voicing over after I've edited the video.
So now what I'm doing is doing a second wash over the top and this is made up of, uh, again, Windsor and Newton. Uh, I've got a mix of the leftover gold from the first wash. I've added a little bit of uh, burnt umber um, so it's slightly less watered down than the first one because I've just added uh, the brown paint. Tiny, tiny blob. Um, I mean, I can't, probably about half the size of a pea I've added to that, so it's slightly thicker than the first wash. Um, and as you can see, I've not done this bit in sections, I've just quickly washed over the whole thing with a big brush. Well, when I say the whole thing, not over the lion's face or mane just the outside. I just wanted to make that slightly darker than the face. Um, and now it's, <coughs> excuse me, now it's time for gold leafing. So um, I've done various ways of attaching this in the past uh, using different types of glues. Uh, for this I've decided to use Liquitex pouring medium as the adhesive. It works really well. I've done it before um, and I've intentionally chosen quite a, a thick not very flexible brush because I don't want the brush when I brush it on to get into all the nooks and crannies and cover everything I want to just capture kind of the peaks um, of the main all the way around so I'm doing a, a really light brush over small sections and then using my little stencil brush which is a very hard bristle brush to just push the gold leaf onto the wet pouring medium so don't want the whole mane to be covered I want to just highlight it really with the gold leaf <laughs> these strips here are very frustrating for one of the first projects I did using this gold leaf I cut into strips and I cut too many strips and now I need to keep trying to use them As you can see, I already got bored of it and I'm back to the full sheets. Uh, once this gold leaf is gone, there's none left. This was actually my grandmother's gold leaf um, from many, many years ago. She passed away last year and um, I just, I love using this gold leaf because, I, not that I need a reminder of her, but it, it really makes me think of her when I use it. So the paintings that I do use this particular gold leaf on are really quite special to me. And the, the gold leaf is just, it's absolutely beautiful. It's so fine, um, but so stunning. I, I'm putting a lot on, as you can see, sheets at a time, really. Um, I did use quite a lot on this project. However, you'll see a bit later on in the video that I carefully brushed all the excess off and I've got a little pot of all the flakes so that I can reuse it. Um, nothing, none of this is going to go to waste. I'm watching this back I'd forgotten quite how many sheets I did use <laughs> uh, obviously now trying to use up these little strips again Maybe just one. I don't know why I decided to just use that one there. I've lost count of the amount of sheets now. So 
so this now needs to dry um, I when I do this gold leaf in make sure I leave it for a good two or three days so that it's fully fully dry um, the, the pouring medium really probably is dry within a few hours uh, you know maybe 12 hours to be really safe but I because this gold leaf is is particularly valuable to me uh, I like to leave it days so that I know that it's going to have worked properly and that when I go in with this really thick stubbly stencil brush um, I'm not going to brush you know get get any of it uh, messed up with the pouring medium still being slightly damp or anything so I'm just doing really light circular motions uh, over the whole area where I've put gold leaf and that will break up and break off anything that isn't actually stuck down the pouring medium is a really good adhesive so it's not going to come off of anywhere uh, that it is it's already stuck down if you know what I mean So now starts the very gentle task of trying to brush off and retain all of this gold leaf. Um, as you can see, it gets the air gets full of gold leaf. So I ended up holding my pulling my top up over my mouth and holding it over there, so I didn't inhale too much of it. But I'm pretty sure I probably inhaled a fair bit of gold leaf that day. So I'm trying to do this really slowly and gently. I, the video is sped up a bit just so that you don't have to watch it at real speed. But uh, I did this really slowly to try and make sure as much of the gold leaf fell onto the table as possible and didn't just fly around the room or onto my clothes. Yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. At some point, I think probably between this video clip and the next one, uh, I added some tiny little sort of gold gems for his eyes. I didn't film that. Or if I did film it, I don't know where the video is. This, this video that I've mashed together was made up of probably about 12 or 13 different video clips. Um, yeah I mean I, I I feel a bit weird saying it but I just absolutely love this it's beautiful in real life it doesn't come across quite as well on camera but it, I think it still looks pretty stunning on camera So as you can see, the edges are still the original deep chocolate brown. I didn't go over the edges with the washes. Very happy with that. So this is pre-varnish. There you can see his little eye there that I've glued on. This is taken outside in the courtyard after a couple of coats of varnish in the sunshine and what it looks like hung on the wall. So I'd love to know what you think of this. The painting as well as this new voiceover format which I may or may not continue to do 
uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below.